Hello and welcome to another video, but this is the first one here in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, this is me plus you, as my name is Kwame. Hi, I'm Elaine. And uh, yeah, we, we are doing, a, if you guys could see the setup, you'd, you'd laugh because we have a very <laughs> makeshift setup. We didn't bring uh, enough gear. So for example, we don't have a tripod, so we're recording with uh, a table and a stack of books. We don't have lights, so we're recording right in front of a window. And yeah, the light here is not <laughs> the best because at the time we're recording, it's still very dark, even though it's morning. Yeah, the light is different and there's not a lot of sunshine. Yeah, and that's one of the things that shocks me about Netherlands. At least this being my first time staying here during the winter season. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's shocking. <laughs> it's a long winter for you. Yeah, it's it's a long one. But funny enough, the days go by a bit fast. But yeah, um, the reason why we're making this video is just to give you guys an update. Uh, we've been here a month yep. already. And um, we just wanted to share how it's felt so far being here. But me, um, especially, the fact that I'm still experiencing uh, a new or new culture shock. Mm hmm even though I've been coming here um, a few times. So, yeah, that's... So, uh, what have been your observations? My observations, um, the first one would be that, you know, when we usually come here in, uh, you know, during the summer or sometimes late summer. late summer, like, you know, almost autumn, mm -hmm. I feel like, okay, people say it's cold, even during that time, like 15 degrees or like 10 degrees or 12 degrees. And I'm thinking, oh, it's not that cold. I actually prefer it so much because I can wear my T-shirt or just a light sweater on top of it. And the breeze is nice. You know, the temperature is nice and everything. But when we arrived this time. <laughs> yeah, it was really cold. It was minus three. Mm -hmm. And that thing hit me like it hit me really hard. I was like, whoa. And it was uh, uh, a painful chill. Like, it's it's not fun at yeah, all. Yeah, it's pinchy. Yeah, it's yeah. not fun at all. And whoa, that really hit me. So I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like the cold? No, I take it back. Because I already even have a, a cold at the moment, as yeah. you can probably hear. But that's meaning that you're doing the Netherlands right because everybody in January either has a cold or a flu. So, so I'm doing it right, eh? Yes. You're experiencing it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> you got the Dutch flu. <laughs> Good. So I have arrived. That's that's basically it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in this video, I'm probably going to, uh, yeah, no, I'm mostly going to share the things that still, you know, S surprise me. For you? Yeah. Or okay. s are, are standing out for me. Okay. We are ready. Yeah. And, and forgive me if they don't all sound positive. It's winter. It's not my fault. Mm. Yeah. So it's, it's blue. Um, one of them is, I think, pleasant. No, the first one is pleasant, um, which mm. is listening to radio and hearing cuss words <laughs> freely. Like where I come from. So I did radio for a couple of years. And mm. in Ghana, I mean, no, I don't know which radio station freely plays every music explicitly as is. No, no radio station does that. Mm. But here, you turn on the radio and they are playing. <laughs> there's, there's no time of day. Like, there's no holds barred. Like, you can be listening to radio around 11 a.m. And if they are playing WAP, I don't know if you, you know WAP or Wet Ass Pussy. I've said it, yes, because... will not YouTube block this? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they would. They'll bleep it. <laughs> maybe they would. Maybe they wouldn't. But it's just everything is there. Nothing is blocked out. I'm like, wow. That's uh, If I was a radio presenter here, I would actually really enjoy it. <laughs> and I think when I brought it up, you said something that, I mean, if you know the song, you know that the cast words already. Yeah, it's already in there. So what's the point of taking it out? Yeah, for kids maybe, but kids don't recognize it as cast words, right? They don't? I don't think so. Well, maybe at some age. I don't know. <laughs> so Now I'm glad you brought it up. So if a kid you take to school 
and that song comes on often and they listen to it and they are experiencing like or they, they like the song so much they sing it out mm. how do you feel about that you can talk to them no say like this is meaning this and this this body part is not necessarily something we should sing about in public but we can sing it at home <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> you can sing it at home oh if they want to sing about their wet ass pussy <laughs> <laughs> okay they can do that in the house no <laughs> okay 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 i don't know we're gonna come to this maybe another time but um the next thing that um still takes me um uh, by surprise i mean i already knew this but i saw it on a different level this time Dutch people are generally very economical, like frugal. They know how to handle or um, save up money mm. or get the best deal or every, like the best out of everything. You know, that's frugality anyway. Like, you know, using the money in the right way enough, you know. And the one that took me out was witnessing this woman and her sister <laughs> sharing a tea bag. <laughs> yes. You're making tea and you're using one tea bag. For two cups. Why not? Why? It's just what we do. Uh, I think it's a Dutch thing, but because that same tea bag makes a full uh can make a full um teapot. So why not use it for two cups instead of getting our own you use that same tea bag for one teapot? One one big teapot? Yes. You can use it for one teapot. So then you can also use it for two cups, you know? Yeah, we like when you use, or except when I make tea for myself, <laughs> I just put the tea bag on the side. I can use it again. What is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> Why would anybody do that? Oh, it's a I thing. mean, if you're watching this video and you do that, I I, I want to know. Not as a Dutch person, like wherever you are, you you double use your tea bag. I want to know. Maybe it's a normal thing, but oh. I don't I, I don't I didn't. See and it's this. also easy to say like, what kind of tea do you want? You just say, oh, I want the same as you, and then you just share. Look at that! <laughs> <laughs> I want the same as you, and then instead of just getting two individual tea bags and making, you know, stronger tea. Mm. You share one tea bag. Yeah. I I know. I bow. It's fine. Like <laughs> wow. Okay. And and um experiencing Dutch parties or gatherings or birthday parties, um <laughs> I don't think can I don't think I can ever get used to it. Why is that? The fact that parties, first of all, they start on time or very early in my opinion mm -hmm. like 7 p.m or whatever like you know and you go in there and it's a group of friends who literally look like they just walked out <laughs> their living room of the house or they're in their living room like they don't really dress up yeah mm -hmm. yeah but i also noticed that because maybe because i'm getting to ghanaian but we went to a party of uh, a friend. It was uh, me, Kwame, and my sister dressing up and going. And we didn't really dress up. I mean, Kwame changed his sweater and uh, my sister and I were wearing a different top, like a more like a party top. Nothing too like... Fancy. No. There you come there. Everybody's just in sweatpants <laughs> looking like hobos. Like, <laughs> like, why? Oh, we're very overdressed. But I I was still like, even though I, we were the only ones overdressed, I was like, no, you guys got it um, wrong. Yeah, it's you, a party. You underdressed. You like, really underdressed. Everybody was looking like eh. they just came out of their living room in their like house clothes. Like sweatpants, sweater. No? Yeah, I'm, I'm just like still picturing it. And the fact that parties are, I mean, first of all, the rule is when somebody invites you to a party, you know, in Ghana, whether it's in the person's house or outside the person's house at the restaurant or something, and it's your birthday and you're like, oh, 
I'm having 20 people come over to my birthday. I've invited you over to this particular location. It's a restaurant. Unless you and the friends coming, you know everybody that's on the list and you have decided that, okay, you are taking care of. From the beginning, you know you're taking care of this bill for this person's party. You organized it, not the person. But when the person organizes it and sends you an invite, you know that they foot everything. You mm. eat, you drink, and everything is on them. Mm. Nobody invites you to their party, whether at home or, okay, yeah, at home it's not possible to pay for anything. Nobody invites you to their party at a location. And at best, your first round of drinks is on them and maybe one snack or something. And then everything else afterwards, mm. you pay your own thing. Yeah, but I think there is a difference because it depends on whether it's on location or whether it's uh, at somebody's house. Because when we were at my cousin's birthday at his house, like it, everything was taken care of. There was food or drinks, all these things. But when you do it outside, it's very expensive. So you say like, okay, I'll pay the first round, the first two rounds. But you let them know in advance if they don't want to take anything else after that. That's up to them. No? <laughs> but maybe it's also our age because maybe in 10 years you would not do that structure anymore. But now everybody's like trying to make ends meet and you just, you know. Yeah, I, I guess. But maybe it relates to the frugality or maybe it's just my stingy people. <laughs> I don't know if it's a Dutch thing. Maybe. I don't know. Is it? Does any can anybody relate to this? If you're not Dutch, watching this, that somebody invites you to their birthday party and you end up, you know, paying for your own bill after maybe the first round being on them. I want to know, but okay. I find it's a bit. Um, uh, yeah, it's 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 a it's a shock or it's a culture shock for mm. me. And um, I think the next one would be the road rules. So this is the first. He's personally affected. That's why he's bringing this up. <laughs> <laughs> spill it. Spill the juice. <laughs> so this one, this is my first time because every time we come over, uh, we're most likely just cycling, walking, using the train. This is the first time that we're staying here longer than our usual visit. So it's more like you're living here a little bit. Mm. You know, we're here for a few months um, to have the baby and be with family as well. And so this is the first time I'm driving here. <laughs> the road rules are a lot. Mm. And not just a lot. They are strictly adhered to, like at people adhere to the road rules here and don't think that you're on a highway somewhere and you can just enjoy the road first of all why do you guys have like uh five no if it's five year five years a 10 lane huge like really big highways you know very free highways and you can't just like go just because it's there and don't think that y you can just drive anyhow and and just go home. <laughs> the cameras are actually watching everything. Because I was surprised. We were just home. And uh, a letter came. In the mail, yeah. That on this said date. He, on on this, this time. On, at this time. On this road. You went seven kilometers above the speed limit. Yeah. And for that, we're fining you. I was like, How oh, much? What? How much is this? 800 cities? Yeah, it's if lot. you convert it, it was 800 cities. Yeah. I was like, whoa. And and um, unfortunately, when that one came, the, the that same morning, so that the message or the, the, yeah, that came in the afternoon. But in the morning, I'd already used the road again mm -hmm. to go to Amsterdam and back. And now I was thinking, whoa, I should be expecting another one coming in because... <laughs> I did not see this coming. Yeah. Because where I'm from, yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same. Like, if you know the road well and where you're driving, often you don't have, like, oh, the camera has caught you up and 
we have your address and so we've sent it to you yeah so yeah you have to adhere a bit more it was it was painful (laughs) yeah it was painful ever since then ever since then i've been driving super super in the you know confines Mm. um i can't no and i tried to remind you as well because when we're driving she's more like the uh, google map google maps plus <laughs> because she's Extra using the google maps when, when we're when we're going to places we i mean of course you have to use google maps because i don't know the netherlands that well yeah and even if you do sometimes you, you you just need to have that to show you you can't know everywhere it's huge come on like mm-hmm. the i one thing i i realize is how like road infrastructure is very very intricate like mm-hmm. everywhere there is some road leading somewhere so you couldn't possibly know all these thousands yeah. of thousands of especially with the highways because kilometers the turns like yeah. where you have to go off and on and then join yeah again. that too that too yeah. the exits yeah you are, you are often exiting you have to be in the outer lane to exit on the left yeah and and you have to go a certain speed because you know buses or trucks use those lanes and mm. bruh yeah but you're doing well i mean driving in another country is not easy yeah so cut yourself some slack as well trying not to lose money yes try <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that one, and uh, I think the last one would be something that I think I've mentioned before. I may have mentioned in our previous video on culture shock. You can check that one out here, mm. and it's still in the trains. Um, how people just really keep to themselves. I can't get used to it, and mm. that I've said before. But the other one is the fact that sometimes even when the train has some space, uh, okay, no, it's a busy train, like, you know, not too um, empty, empty. And people sit and there's one other space by them. And you feel like if you sit by them, you're invading their space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I understand what you mean. Yeah. Meanwhile, there's there's a free space. You're not entire trotro anywhere. Somebody's sitting, and somebody's sitting on one of the seats, and you feel like, oh, if I sit by this person, I'm invading their space. Who should pay for that seat? Yeah, or when they put their bags on it, yeah, then you ask like, could I? Because of so there's a bit of a staffing problem with the the trains currently in mm-hmm. the Netherlands. So there, the trains are shorter, uh, and there are less trains going, which means that often the trains are now quite full. So when the train like. I mean, when it's full and then people have their bags next to them on a, like a seat and you ask, like, could I please sit here? And then they do it like you're bothering them. Yeah. And I'm like, you're bothering me because this should be a free seat. No, exactly. It's interesting. And it's, it's, it feels so tense when you sit by the, by like somebody in a train, like it's almost like, why are you sitting next to me? Like, why? But I I get it when the train when the train is empty and then let's say the train is empty and then you sit here and I go sit next to you that I would find a bit weird. Yeah, I mean, understandably because then so. Then you can just be uh, anywhere else. Yeah, understandably so. But when the train is not empty, yeah. I mean, I don't I don't think people would make be so um, uh, <laughs> weird about it that had an empty train, mm-hmm. so many other seats. And you could only come and sit next to me on a yeah. two seat uh, uh, lane. No, that's that's a bit much. I'm just saying that when the train is almost full, and you go, s- there's a space. And why why is your bag on the seat? Mm. Yeah, it's a bit rude. But I do think it also got worse because of COVID. Because at some point you had to wear like the face masks in public transport, and that kind of prohibits you also from talking. Like the engagement is just a lot less because you only see the eyes. Um, so I think that kind of worsened the, like the distance to talk to strangers or like just care in general. Yeah. Because you just like focused on, I have to get here. I want to keep my distance. Don't come into my zone because of COVID. Maybe. 
well. Okay, and any positive things? <laughs> well, I started on the positive. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, on the flip side, if you ask me, even the, with the road uh, mm -hmm. rules, for example, it's a really good thing because then it forces people to um, keep mm -hmm. other people safe on yeah. the road. Yeah. It's it's on the flip side. It's a really good thing, just because it affected me that I went seven kilometers above a speed particular speed limit and I got fined for it. Doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's a shock that it was actually that effective. You were sitting in your house and then boom, you have yeah. the letter in your house. That's what I mean by the shock. But if I look at it, it's it's rather positive. Mm, okay. But uh, any other experiences that were highlight for you this month? Um, I went to the Amsterdam Light Show. Oh, you on your own? We went to. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. Elaine took me out on a date. Thank you. <laughs> Give credit when credit is due. <laughs> this was a surprise. Surprise me. <laughs> Thank you. Elaine surprised me with the Amsterdam Light Show, mm. which uh, I think happens every year. Mm -hmm. Has been happening. I don't know when it started. I uh, think about 11 years ago. Ah, good. So it's just uh, light sculptures. Light on art. Yeah. Art on the waterway, on, on the, the canals, canals in, yeah. in, in Amsterdam. And I really, really enjoyed it because um, most of them were very... Uh, creative mm. and i learned that you just um apply for it to want to do it it's not like they give the contract to specific artists yeah, or anything so you can apply, any individual yeah. who has an idea wants to execute yeah. can apply and do it yeah and yeah i really loved it i yeah. really loved so it so what norm there's like a route you can walk so you buy kind of the map then you can walk around but that was like 6.5 kilometers, and that's quite a lot for me in this state. <laughs> so I was like, no, I can't do that. No. So we uh, got a ticket for a boat, and it's really nice because then you can get quite close to the artworks. Itself, yeah. And you're at a different angle than from, a, if you're looking at it from a bridge, it's further away, you're more high up, but with the boat, you can yeah. come really close. Yeah. But which ones were your favorite, or did you have a favorite? I had a couple of favorites. I liked the Matrix mm -hmm. the most. Why is that? I think it was the simplicity of it and the fact that it draws you in with the, the... I'll put it on the screen for you guys to check out. It draws you in with just a simple brown screen and it's like it's very immersive driving or like when you're sailing past it. I think that was my favorite. I also like the fire in front of the old hotel, the very expensive hotel. Yeah, that one I had. So, so the Amstel Hotel is one of the most prestigious hotels. We had a really good guide. She was really badass. Like she was uh, the captain and as well talking. Uh, so they talked about the artworks and then where they were located. But what I liked about that fire was that it's, it's you know, when there's heat coming off of a fire, it kind of gives you this... Mirage. M yeah. And like it looked it, like you can, it looked like you, there was, was heat actual, coming off. Yeah, and I was, was like, just light. How? It was just light. It was just that? the illusion of the lights that was really, really, really good. And I also liked the lollipop forest. Yeah. And that's what the, the, the captain named it. Yeah. When we passed by um, the art pieces, she asked us, what, what, what do you think it looks like? What do you, how would you name it if you were like, you mm -hmm. would, you know? And I think the last one as well in the science museum, the reverse waterfall. Ah, yeah. I, for me, that one wasn't so impressive, but I understand why I liked it. Why do you understand why I liked it? <laughs> it was, I mean, it wasn't the most intriguing for me. It was... Me, yeah, I liked it because I guessed it right. <laughs> <laughs> she asked, what do you think it is? And then he said, reverse waterfall, reverse waterfall. But nobody heard him and he was a bit disappointed. And then later she yes. heard it. <laughs> you, you raise your hand in class and nobody hears anything. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's nice. So it was a good date. Yeah, it was a good date. And after we got some really nice food. Oh, yeah. To warm up because it was quite cold. It was quite cold. Yeah. I don't think it was cold. It was very windy on that day. It was 11 mm -hmm. degrees, I remember. But the winds were extreme, so it hits harder. Yeah. And you're also sitting still on the boat. It was a small boat. It wasn't like you could walk around. It was more yeah. like a 10-people boat or something. Yeah. Or 15, maybe. Yeah, and we had a really nice warm meal and yeah it was pretty good mm. but um in the other days or yeah other things we've done one of them has been having a maternity shoot 
Yes, that was long overdue. <laughs> yeah. I was even thinking it might come too late, but in the end... It did happen with yes. Elaine's best friend, Sabine, who was an amazing photographer. Yes. Shout out to yeah. Sabine van Nistelrooy. Woof, woof. Yeah, so what we're going to do is leave you with uh, a short clip of a behind the scenes of how yeah. the day was with uh, yeah. a photo shoot. Yeah, it was nice to do. Then I was the work of art. For a change. You are a work of art. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> Look at you blush. Mm. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye bye. See you next time. photo shoot to memorize how my body is now and how this period has been so yeah let's see how it goes <laughs> <laughs> I'm not used to being like a model <laughs>